And that just snaps back into place like I said. You know, it's the standard oyster case with the ridges on it that you need a special key to open. I'm sure you've all seen one of these before. This has, like I said, the older connectors from the bracelet to the, to the case. So it's got these little tabs on the bottom too that connect it to the case. Newer ones don't have that. They don't, there's nothing over covering the spring bars. They're just, they're recessed. But, um, bracelet's marked too. There's it, I can't. If you, there's a number right where my thumb is. That's a serial number. It's on both sides, I believe. Yep. And it's a standard Submariner number. All of them are the same. Yeah. It's right here. My number is. Well, excuse me. They're all 93150. They're all the same from that time, so I shouldn't say it's my number because it's not unique. Um, the inside of the case is important, but I don't have a key to open it, so I can't show you. But this Submariner up to current, I think they won in 1988, is the movement Rolex calls a 3135. It's an automatic winding movement. I think it's 28,800 beats per beats per minute, but don't quote me on that. It's uh, like I said, it's automatic winding. It's um, if you open it up, you can you can Google pictures of it. it as most Rolexes do, it has the telltale telltale. There's red gears, and it, Rolex movements are unique in that they use special red gears in their movements because. They can, as I'm sure many of you know, they do all their movements in-house. A lot of makers like Breitling and Cartier and Omega and etc. they buy movements from ETA, ETA, and they call it Bosch movements. They buy them blanks and they make them into what they want. Rolex does everything in-house, so their movements are completely their design. I um, don't know if you, how much of the face you can you should see the face. On a real Rolex, the printing is perfect as is mine. You can see everything looks very crisp or maybe you can't. You can see the date window better from this angle too. See how it perfectly fills up the Cyclops. Um, you can also see that Rolex, unlike Breitling and others, doesn't use an anti-reflective crystal so you can see that this thing is reflecting just about everything around it. I don't know why they never put a reflective coating on these but they didn't. This is also, like I said, an old, a slightly older model so you'll see that it has push pins where the uh, the bracelet means the case. The newer ones there aren't these holes here. You have to use a tool and pop it out from the bottom. So, uh, yeah, all in all, it's been a very nice watch. I mean, I really like it. I think if I ever got rid of it, I would replace it with like a Yacht Master or something. Just, I guess the only thing about it that kind of bugs me is that um, it doesn't quite feel as expensive as it is. I mean, as I'm sure you've seen my other videos and stuff, and now I've owned bazillions of watches. I mean everything you name it from Gerard Perigo to Omega to Breitling to I can't even think of a Tudor. I just I know I own a lot of, I've had a lot of different brands and uh this watch in particular it it's I mean the bracelet's very lightweight. This is before they did solid links and it just there are moments where it kind of feels cheap. <laughs> and it's you know, for a watch that I think the current retail, depending on who you buy from, is six thousand and up. And um a lot of dealers are will be cheap on and charge you sixty like at least sixty two or sixty five hundred dollars u s because they claim there's still a high demand for them and they do they sell well I think they're still the most popular model so for something that expensive you'd expect it to feel that expensive and it doesn't always feel that way um especially if you've ever worn like a brightling their their cases and stuff they feel very expensive they feel very well made and it's not that it feels cheap it just doesn't you know feel, I guess, the way you'd expect a $6,000 watch to feel. But, you know, like I said, it keeps amazing time. To, if you unscrew, when you unscrew the crown and you wind it and change the dates, everything is just extremely smooth. It just feels very precise. It's just, I don't know, it, the, that, the movement itself is amazing. I told you, the time is perfect and it just, it feels very expensive. It feels very precise. So, I hope I've helps you understand a little bit more about the Rolex Submariner. Obviously, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them, and I will try to get back to them. Some of you have noticed that I'm pretty bad at answering some things. I've been very busy lately as I'm finishing up college, so I hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, like I said, if you're looking into a Rolex or something too, a Submariner is definitely not a bad choice. Just make sure you buy it from a reputable dealer or you have somebody inspect it, because I said earlier they're the most counterfeited watch in the world. And uh, so make sure you know everything about them before you go out looking for one. All right. I hope that's it. Hope you have a good day. Bye.